Welcome back to Storm Psychology, a series where we learn about a psychological concept, then connect it to Heroes of the Storm to find out how we can use that information to help us get better at the game. Now, usually, I go over the topic first and I give a brief description and explanation of what it is. But today, we're just going to hop right into the story. Back in May of 2006, a contractor named Douglas Erickson entered the Sullivan mine to do some routine water sampling. Two days later, he is reported as missing, and Robert Newcomb was sent into the mine to find out what happened. He discovered that Douglas had died, and shortly after his finding, Robert also died. The person who was then responsible for responding to this incident dispatched two additional rescue paramedics to go down into the mine. Well, there are two people then inside the mine, so I'm going to send the two more people to go inside the mine. What could go wrong? Unsurprisingly, the two paramedics also died. Now, these people aren't random potatoes going into the mine and dying for no reason. All the people involved in this incident are skilled professionals who are highly trained in dealing with hazardous and dangerous situations. Yet, it took them four human deaths before realizing that there was an oxygen deficit inside the mine. The next people to go inside were firefighters with oxygen tanks, and they retrieved the bodies and made it out alive. According to research done, on the Sullivan Mine disaster, the reason for this happening was a phenomenon called confirmation bias, which is the tendency for people to search for and interpret information in a way that favors their pre-existing beliefs, while not giving proportional consideration to alternative and conflicting possibilities. So the people dealing with the Sullivan Mine incident were so sure that they knew what was going on that they utterly ignored the astounding evidence that something inside the mine was causing these people to die and that they should analyze that evidence before sending more people in. So while we're on the topic of mines, uh, if you're new to Heroes of the Storm, you might not be familiar with the Haunted Mines. Haunted Mines was a map that was removed from the rotation uh, because Blizzard felt as if the optimal strategy for winning the map uh, was too single faceted and didn't really have a healthy and diverse gameplay potential. Uh, now this map had two levels, the main map area and an underground mine. And far too often, someone would go down to the underground mine by themselves, run into all five enemies, and die. Then, another person would proceed to immediately go down into the mines by themselves again and face the exact same fate. Then, for whatever otherworldly reason, a third person would proceed to go down into the mines once again by themselves and get instantly blown up by, you guessed it, the five enemies who happen to still be down there. So at this point, you've watched three of your allies go down into a death pit in a single file line, even though the second and third ally clearly saw one or two other people die by doing that exact same thing. Your allies were most likely suffering from confirmation bias. Going into the mine, they were so sure that they were going to farm the objective in the mine uh, and win a few duels that they did not give appropriate consideration to the fact that their allies already tried to do that and died for it. So, instead of changing their original beliefs about their own power, they ignored the conflicting evidence and just went down there anyway. Alright, so let's go over another example. Imagine that you love playing Thrall and your favorite talent is Frostwolf's Grace. But one day, you're browsing through some talent win rate statistics and you realize that Frost Wolf's Grace has a 54% win rate and you're like, aha, I knew it, this is the best talent. 
and you ignore the fact that a guide <clears throat> on this fabulous website called templestorm.com tells you to pick wind shear because it has a far higher synergy with other talents. And instead, you just pick out and remember the one piece of information that confirms what you already believe. So from these examples, uh, it's clear that confirmation bias could play a big role in holding you back from improving. So what are the best ways to avoid falling victim to confirmation bias? First is the lookout for new information. If you think that you know something, try to actively seek out information from as many different sources as possible that may conflict with what you think you already know, and then actually consider that information. And if you can't find anything, then try asking a reliable outside source for their opinion. Next is to collect more data. If you really think that a particular build works particularly well, start logging your own personal win-loss statistics. If you think that a build is good, you might subconsciously only be remembering games where you did well with that build, while defeats might fade away from your memory. So having solid numbers as data uh, will help you make more accurate decisions. And finally, number three is to say it out loud. Now, sometimes when you say something out loud, it sounds a lot weirder than when you were thinking about it in your head. Uh, and that might help you catch some silly plans before you go and you actually do them. Uh, you might be familiar with the phrase, that sounded a lot better in my head. And this is exactly what we're trying to catch. All right, that about wraps it up for today's episode. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous three episodes, uh, I'll leave a link to the Storm Psychology playlist in the description. Uh, these videos are based on a series originally written by Corey Tincher, uh, and I'll leave a link to his article in the description as well. Uh, and you can check out some more of his content over at youtube.com slash Regis uh, I know that I revealed a new daily video schedule last week, but that clearly isn't going to happen right now uh, due to all the roster shuffles. Uh, and the fact that some of our pro players are still new to content production, but we're still working on getting out as much stuff as possible. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up. Uh, and finally, uh, a few days ago, Zoya revealed our roster going into the Global Championship 2016 summer season. Uh, so stick around until the outro and I'll put a little annotation where you can check that out. And uh, that's about it. So I'll see you guys next week. But let's talk about the current roster. Uh, Ko, Goku, and Zix are all staying with the team. Uh, we are planning a big announcement that kind of got a little bit spoiled today, but uh, K uh, Goku and Zix have both officially signed.